Hey, what's up, guys? Three minutes to fly here. Um, WrestleMania season is right around the corner, and you know, this isn't particularly the hypest WrestleMania, but um, I wanted to do a video real quickly on um, one of my predictions for NXT Takeover in New York. Now, due to the extremely long card. An eight-hour show of WrestleMania, and then the fact that uh, you have the all these big events going on, the Hall of Fame being moved to Saturday, the NXT Takeover New York has been moved to Friday, and you know NXT usually always kills it around this time. They usually always you know, have a great show before WrestleMania, and I want to do a brief uh, prediction video on. Uh, NXT TakeOver New York. So, first we have um, Ricochet and Aleister Black versus the War Raiders for the NXT Tag Team Championships. Now, uh, they won the Dusty Rose Classic to earn its opportunity to face the War Raiders for the uh, NXT Tag Team Titles. Now, obviously here, the War Raiders are going to retain the belts. I mean, it's just not much to it. Um, with Alicia Black and Ricochet recently being called up to Raw and SmackDown Live and constantly coming to both shows. It wouldn't really make a lot of sense for them to win the belts. So obviously I can see the War Raiders retaining the titles here. Whether they retain the titles clean or win by you know, some counter or something, I can definitely see them retain the belts. I can see the reason why Ricochet and Alicia Black win the tag team belts, win the NXT tag team titles. And then win the belt, and then win the SmackDown tag team titles at WrestleMania because uh, just at the last minute, Alistair Black and Ricochet, who literally just had an opportunity at the Raw tag team titles, are now being put in a fatal four way tag team match for the SmackDown tag team titles, the Usos, um, at WrestleMania. So if they're already going to be on the main card at WrestleMania, and this is the night before WrestleMania, obviously they're going to lose. In every case scenario, whenever a superstar from NXT has been called to the main roster and they have like a championship match or something the night before WrestleMania, obviously, you know, they're not going to come out on top like in the game. And, and then in some cases, when they lose, you know that they're going to get called up. So it's even one of the two. Either they lose and, you know, it's because they're already on the main roster or you know, they lose, and you know that they're actually about to get called up soon. So, there you go with that. So, Alex Black and Ricky have to go away from taking the NXT tag team titles. Um, this would only be the first, really, the only the first title defense they're doing on uh, the takeovers because the last takeover um, that was in. Uh, Phoenix they actually won that the NFT tag team belts for the um, Spirit Era. So, this is only their first title defense in the takeovers. So, they're definitely going to retain the belts. Uh, so, next up, you have um, the. Next up, you have Develop Team Dream versus Matt Riddle for the NXT North American Championship. I seen something, uh, something that was leaked that said the Velveteen Dream was going to retain the belt, and I hope he does. Um, you know, I would love to see the Velveteen Dream as the North American Champion for quite some time. Um, I don't think he should get called up to the main roster yet, especially with the amount of, of what they're doing with everyone on the main roster, just flipping them the both shows. It's kind of like the it's kind of like the the brand split doesn't even mean much anymore with how much switching around they're doing, throwing people from show to show, overbooking guys. I mean, for the Velveteen Dream right now, aka Patrick Clark, I think it's best, you know, if he just uh, stays a little bit long at NXT. So um, it was kind of sad how quick they took the battle with Johnny Gargano, but I'll get to Johnny Gargano a little later. But I, I do hope the Velveteen Dream. Retains against Matt Riddle, and I think that he will retain against Matt Riddle. Um, 
I think it's a little too early for Matt Riddle to win the North American Championship. Plus, this would be a huge moment for the Velvet injury because, uh, you know, in most takeovers, he's had great amount of matches, but usually, um, you know, he doesn't win them. Like, his best matches at takeovers have been the ones that he lost. Like, when he faced... Um, Ricochet at one of his one of the tables last year, which um I think that was the one in Chicago. Um, you know, great match, amazing match, but he didn't win. You know, most of his best matches he doesn't win at takeovers. The last match he won at takeover was when he went against EC3, and I think that was. A, Take over the board games. It's when they face each other. I could be wrong. Not because I don't like the table, but because of, um, lost a I could be wrong. Um, I think it was the one in the board game. It might have been before that. I know. I had it actually, I think it was before that because it was around SummerSlam time, I think, when we were in DC, in Brooklyn. One of the two, I might have been Brooklyn. I think that was the one it was. And the morning is a Brooklyn. I think it was Brooklyn. That's when he went against EC3. And um, he won the match, but it wasn't like one of his best matches. So, like, usually, I do know that he had a great performance in the latter match at New Orleans last year before the uh, NXT takeover in New Orleans. Uh, but then the next two takeovers they did. Um, one was in Chicago, he went against Ricochet, um, I think a great match, but he didn't win, and he didn't, and then the next one was like in Brooklyn, and that's, I think, that's when he won his DC3, uh, and that was a decent match, but it wasn't one of his best performances, uh, he, he, won, he won the match, you know, but it wasn't. Um, one of his best performances. So that's why I said so with, with Valentine Dream, I would love to see him uh, win this match. I think that he is going to retain the belt. I think he's going to hold on to the NXT American Championship for quite some time. Um, and I'm all for it. So there you go with that. So with Valentine Dream, um, I think he's going to retain the belt. Uh, so there's two titles I don't see changing hands. Tag team titles change hands, and I don't see the North American title change hands. Next up, you have uh, this is for the Women's NXT Championship. So you have Shayna Baszler against Leo Sherrod versus Kyrie Sane versus uh, Bianca Belair. Now, this is a tricky one. Um, I feel like Shayna's going to lose the belt. I definitely think Shayna's going to lose the belt, and what this might lead into is um, maybe some interference. There's been a lot of speculation that Lana might end up retaining her belt and unifying the championship at WrestleMania with the help of Shanna Baszler and um, her other two UFC buddies to start the whole four horsewomen thing. It's possible that that may actually happen if Lana chooses to stay with the company Um on, you know, and not take a break. It wasn't really the fact that she was going to leave. I mean, she just wanted to, you know, have more time with her husband, you know, make start a family, but she was going to come back, but he wanted to take some time off. But, you know, if she doesn't do that, then, you know, there could be a swerve where they interfere and uh, help her retain the belt. So I definitely see Shana Baszler losing her title. Because this could lead into her coming to WrestleMania and making her debut there. That's what this could lead into. So I definitely can see her losing the belt here. I don't think Shane's going to retain. Uh, she pretty much was champion most of last year. Pretty much all of last year. I mean, she lost the belt from Kyrie saying, um, NXT TakeOver, I believe, Brooklyn. Yeah, it was NXT TakeOver, Brooklyn. She lost the belt to Kyrie. 
won the belt back from Kairi Singh at Evolution, which is what started the whole thing of, uh, of uh, her UFC buddies helping her out and helping her retain the belt and stuff like that. That's what, that's what uh, uh, all started this whole thing with the women's pay per view uh, Evolution last year. That's what started her getting help to retain her belt. She pretty much was champion for all of last year from the time she beat Ember Moon to win the belt. All the way until, um, all the way until she lost to Kyrie Sane and won it back with Kyrie Sane like just two months later. She was pretty much dominantly here all that year. So there's no reason for retaining the belt in any shape or form. I think this could go in two ways. I think, uh, I'm rooting for Bianca Baylor. You know, a lot of people underestimate her. A lot of people don't really like her character. A lot of people, uh, you know, don't really understand why she keeps saying the undefeated thing. You know, she's had this mindset. Uh, I personally think that either Leo Sherrod is going to win, or Leo Sherrod or uh, Bianca Belair. I don't think Kyrie Sane is going to win because she's already been the NXT winning champion. I think it's going to go to one of those two. I don't know which one, but I think it's going to be either Leo Sherrod or Bianca Balor. And it'll most likely probably be Leo Sherrod. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, forgive me, but I'm pretty sure it'll most likely be her. Who I root for is Bianca Balor. But I do think that it's most likely going to be It's most likely going to end up being because I definitely don't see um, Shayna retaining. I see Shayna dropping the belt. I see the title change. And I literally see that kind of being the slow call of Shayna Baszler at WrestleMania is what it could be. It could lead into her coming out at WrestleMania, you know, helping Ronda. And it would make sense because Ron is a heel now. Shayna's already been a heel since she's been at NXT. So it would make sense, you know, for them to come out now. It would disappoint me because I want Becky to win, to, you know, win the match. But at this point, if I didn't swerve the story so much, I wouldn't be surprised if Becky doesn't win. And one of the reasons could be because, you know, um, Cheryl, um God, because Shayna. Ronda could have her, her buddies come out and help her retain the belt. And it could just go from there. But there were also rumors that um that they might actually split Shayna and her buddies and uh, that that whole crew because they you know two of them I know she did one of the get the other one. I know that two of them um they they realize they're pretty good at seeing competition. They might score them. If they don't, then I definitely I don't see Shane or Tay like if they do with Leo Chirot or uh, Bianca Bell. I'm gonna win one of them I'm gonna win them. Guarantee. I definitely don't see Shane and Kyrie Shane is definitely gonna win I don't see um as much as I love Kyrie Shane, she's not gonna win um, next up, you have Pete Dunn versus Walter for the United Kingdom uh, Championship. Um, I think now, that, okay. <sighs> Walter. I don't, I'm not very familiar with this guy. Uh, now, I have looked at some clips of when he was in PWG and other wrestling promotions, and I've seen how good he is. I don't know why I watched his matches anything. I know he had some good matches with Little Offspray. Uh, I know he has some good matches with other guys, but I really I not really watch them, but I have seen some clips and I've seen him. Devastating his chops are. He's a hell of a he's a hell of a guy. Um, as much as I think 
you know, Walter, and everyone pretty much knows Walter is going to be the guy to take he does championship from him. It kind of sucks knowing that there's so many other guys in uh, NXT UK that could have taken a belt and beat them. Like, why bring this guy who's relatively new to the company, he's a badass, but he's relatively new to the company to be the one who takes the throne and beat them. But you could have had anyone else do it. Because it's not like the people Pete Dunne faced were like, sorry. It wasn't like they were sorry. It wasn't like they were bums. They were some really good guys. You know, um, you could have had anybody do it. Um, what, is, what is that guy's name? Um, um, he defended the title a lot. He's been champion for basically two years at this point. Just a belt. He won the belt from uh, Tyler Bate. Uh, NXT. This is back when they were in Chicago of 2017. He won the belt. And he's been champion ever since. And it's like, you know, Pete Dunne is the bruise away at whatever he does. Remind me a lot of William Ringle with his technical style, the way he wrestles. But. You know, and I say this for any uh, person who's been champion for over a year, even longer. It just, in this day and age, um, after a while, it gets very tiring to see someone hold the belt for that long. You know, and I know they like to have them in the history book and say, oh, this person is the seventh or eighth longest reign, and that's longer than that. There's no question. That Pete Dunne is going to go down history as the longest reigning uh, United Kingdom champion. However, I hope that is not something they continue to do because, you know, long reigns are fine and Danny, but after a while, you just look back and the match gets so redundant. You just think in your mind, like, who's going to beat this guy? Like, who's going to take the belt off him? When someone's champion for that long, a year, close to two years, you're like, who the heck is going to beat them? I mean, of course, you had, you know, the famous guys. I mean, back in the day, uh, they did this a lot. You know, Hulk Hogan was champion for like four years or so. Uh, Bruno San Martino, he was champion for uh, a very, very long time. Um, um, I can't think right now of the entire how many years it was, but I know it was more than two or three years. So it's happened before in the past, but I'm like, that was then, this is now. At that time, you know, that was one thing in the 70s and 60s and 80s and all that to do that, but right now in this era, to still have people hold the belt for this long, you know, and to know there's so many other talents, because another thing, that tends to take away from other guys who step it up, who should you know, have that opportunity to be champion and they don't get it because you're spending so much time on keeping the belt on one guy. Pete Dunn has been champion for almost two years and it's at least it's got to be about 800 something days at this point. Because I remember at NXT UK Blackpool, Blackpool, which I believe is the first NXT pay per view, or uh, not pay per view. First NXT Takeover UK event that they did, which is NXT UK, uh, back in January of this year. At that time, he was already champion for seven hundred some days. So now it's April, so he he has to have been champion for over eight hundred nine or something days, close to a thousand. So it's like, um, I definitely think Walter, even if he doesn't win the belt this time, he's going to win the match. Even if he doesn't win the belt immediately, he's definitely going to win the match. Even if he wins the Melson belt and screwy finish, he's, he's going to win the match. But if that doesn't happen, if he wins clean, he's taking the belt off. He's done. Like it's just, there's no question that Walter's going to be Pete Dunn for the NXT UK. It's just, the time for Pete Dunn is over. Now, again, 
the only problem I have with this is this takes away from other guys who's been in the UK a lot longer and who are well deserving to have taken the belt off Pete Dunn. And then they have this guy, Walter, who's a badass with other emotions, who just got here and already they're handpicking him to be the one to take the belt off Walter. I mean, God, to take the belt off Pete Dunn. And again, you know, I'm not knocking on it, but I just I just think that it, it really does take away from other guys who's went against Pete Dunn who could have actually beaten Pete Dunn if you can tell you and it didn't happen. Um you know, I wouldn't have mind seeing Tyler Bate win the title again. I mean, just someone different could have easily won that belt. And um they they just don't capitalize on that type of stuff. I, I do see Walter taking the belt now. Of course, the only problem with this is if Walter does win the belt, they'll probably have Walter be champion for a long period of time. So it'll probably take another year or two before so it'll be I, just, I don't know. Like, to me, when they did it with AJ Styles, even after a while, I was like, it was like, you know, it'll be a day before. Once you're champion for over a year or two, you really start to want a new champion. Because it's like, uh, I'll give him credit because as the UK champion, he did defend the belt a lot. He was in a lot of high profile matches. Um, you know, he didn't just sit around and hold the belt for two years and not defend it barely. Like, he defended the belt a lot within these two years that he's been here. Um, but I definitely think that. I just hope, you know, it's kind of sad no one else, you know, and, uh, let's see, oh, so we talked about the American Championship, we talked about the Tennessee Championship, we talked about the Women's Championship, we talked about the UK, so now we're, I believe this is now the main event, uh, the last match for the NXT Championship. So we have Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT Championship. Tommaso Ciampa had to relinquish the belt due to his neck injury. Um, he's going through spinal tenosis, cyanosis, which is actually the same the same thing that caused Edge, Stone Cold, and uh, and even Paige to retire. And and it's something that Sheamus has, but somehow he's still going. So I do hope that Tommaso Ciampa uh, can recover from this, and I hope that it doesn't cost him his career because he's an excellent heel. Uh, he's one of the best heels in the business right now. Um. So I would love to see um him come back. But, you know, this match is interesting. Um, so, I think with this one here, I think that I, I would love to say that this would be Johnny Gargano's dream. It would probably be his moment that he would win the championship. But as we've seen many times that Johnny was given the championship opportunities, it didn't end well in his favor. Um, I think I would love to see John Gargano win, but it would not surprise me one bit if Adam Cole won the belt. It would not surprise me. Just because of the simple fact that uh, Johnny kind of reminds me a lot of how a lot of day of writing some degree was slight differences. It's just with him, it's like he, every time he's Reaching up to the big room, he doesn't get the opportunity, he doesn't get the chance. But it would not surprise me if Adam Cole did. Um, I think Adam Cole is probably the favorite to win this match to win the NXT Championship. If not, then he's probably on his way up to the main roster, which is something that Johnny was already doing up until the so I think 
by Tommaso Ciampa getting injured with his having a neck problem, his neck surgery, which was supposed to be him versus Tommaso Ciampa at Table New York. I think because of that, that kind of made them just change up everything to the point now where, um, because of his injury, it may actually have Johnny just stay in NXT longer. So if Johnny does win the belt, then you can definitely, the same way I said, Shayna Baszler and her crew will probably get called up. That definitely is a sign that Adam Cole and his crew uh, could be getting called up to the main roster by like the night after the or something. Um, but if if uh, Adam Cole wins, um, where do they go from there with Johnny? I don't know because I mean, unless you want him to be a singles competitor on both brands, which they really need to make up their minds. And he was kind of messed up because since they're unifying the women's tag, the women's uh, championship belt, you might as well just have the press with him as well. It's just to do that. Not only that, but since they already have a little tag and so you can be defended with your evil brand, you might as well say that um, that is pretty much toast if they're going to go with this direction. You know, so I, I think Adam is most likely going to win this match. Johnny, I would love him to win. I would love him to be a woman. But it's just something about it. Now, I was right on my last prediction when I said uh, during the time of NXT TakeOver Phoenix in January, I said that Johnny was going to be Ricochet with the American Championship. And I was actually right with that prediction. I was right on point. I just had a feeling that John is going to finally win a match and take a singles match by himself. And I was right. This time here, I want Johnny to win, but something is telling me that Adam is going to win. But if Adam doesn't win, that would be great because John will finally have his moment that he should have had against my friend the end of the long run. And win the uh, NXT championship, um, which will kind of tell you if that's the case. That even though when Kevin Owens was NXT champion, he did appear on Raw. Uh, it kind of tells you that if that happens, that he's going to be on NXT pretty much for for a longer time since uh, since they pretty much dropped the whole thing. So yeah, and that pretty much wraps it up, guys. So um, I don't know if I would do a WrestleMania prediction this year. I did do one last year. I don't know if I'll do one this year because it's so long that I would have to just kind of skim it really quickly. Like who I think is going to win the match, and uh, the fact that. Really bothers me that you know, they got all these matches, but then there's still some people who the cut. And then you move some things to the pre show because you want to showcase everyone at WrestleMania. It's like, and then one of the problems with this is that when they have all these matches, they tend to cut stuff because of time restraints, they tend to cut things. And that's what things become a problem. So I kind of think it's ridiculous how they're doing it this year. So I don't know if I'm. Ridiculous, man. I might do it. You all, man. We'll see how that goes. But I love it. Sign off, Ray Russell.